So I have created my timer here. It's counting up. And this program is cool because it will actually, if you were curious to why our Nyquist frequency was so low, I have found a function in the Arduino program that uh, will fix it, okay? Because the reason that our frequency program failed before, okay, is we were t reading a voltage from uh, the Arduino card and passing that information to the computer, okay? And this is a, it's a pretty slow process because it means your Arduino card has to interface with the serial port. It's also got to, we were reading an analog voltage, which is also really slow. Um, and so, in effect, we were only, I could only ever get up to about 3 kilohertz, which, if you're really serious about taking data, that's really horrible, okay? And the Arduino card is capable of much faster than that, right? I mean, it should be able to, it's, I, it's, its processor is, you know, several thousand kilohertz, so we should be able to get much higher. And I think Dimitri was saying he could get up, he could read samples in the megahertz regime, yeah. Okay, and so what he, his method was, is he wasn't actually passing the data to LabVIEW and then analyzing the frequency, he was just having the Arduino card do everything, okay? So if your signal is actually a series of digital pulses, right, you have, and you could convert an analog sig signal to that if you wanted to, but you could have the Arduino card read digital pulses really quickly, and then you could actually have it do on chip a calculation to tell you what the frequency was. And once you calculated the frequency with the Arduino card, you could then send the frequency to National Instruments. And so really, if that's how you wanted, if you were really interested in actually collecting serious data with this, that's how you'd want to do it. You'd want the card itself, the Arduino card, to actually do all of the calculations for you and then just send the frequency to LabVIEW. That's the best way to do that. Now, um, another reason why it failed was because we were just reading a voltage, and then we were using LabVIEW to put the timestamp on the data. Okay? And between the Arduino software and LabVIEW, it ended up being a really slow process. So another way you can do it, if you look at my, this is my program for the clock, and I want to go through it with you guys just because I think it's cool and it's also handy. But there is this function right here. It's called micros, okay? And if you look right here, so just micros, and then it's got the brackets, okay? And what that function does is it tells you how many microseconds have passed since the program started running, okay? So with this function, then you could actually just read data with your DAC card and send two numbers over the serial port, okay? And then you could build up, you could build up your array that way, okay? Because that's the, that's the thing that you need is, you need first of all your voltage from the signal, so your amplitude, but then you also need a timestamp, right? When was your data taken, okay? So if you were designing a system, right, these are all really important considerations to uh, to think about, because my first idea was, okay, I'm going to read a voltage with my Arduino card, pass it to LabVIEW, and put the timestamp on it there, right? So every time I get a value from my Arduino card, I'll say it happened at this time, and I'll use that to find the frequency. But the better way to do it would just have it, the Arduino card do everything for you, okay? So this is, this is the ultimate, um, the best way to do it. Now, if you look at my program here, okay, um, these first ones here, this pen mode, we've seen that before. Um, I'm getting ready to implement my stepper motor function. I started out uh, actually programming that. Those, these are going to be my four outputs, right, because in order to get the stepper motor to work, we're going to need to have four outputs that are going to go to your four transistors, right, because we have... Uh, we're going to have four transistors that we need to, to run the stepper motor, okay? And those transistors are going to allow us to send current pulses through the little coils inside of the stepper motor. And those little coils produce a magnetic field, which actually is what has your stepper motor uh, start turning, okay? 
So, the way it's going to work is we're going to send a series of pulses in different directions. We're going to oscillate the polarity. The current's going to go back and forth. And if we do the right pulsing sequence, and I want to go through the code with you to do that, it's pretty, it's not, we're going to just make a very simple code, which I'm sure you guys can improve because I'm not the best program. I, can, I get the job done when I program, but it's not pretty usually. So, usually students are much better at writing elegant code than I am, but my philosophy is get it done and go drink beer. No, don't I. That's the hours of joke, actually. That's going to be on YouTube. Uh, but let's take a look here at my function. Okay. So why don't you guys take a minute and can you guys figure out what... Now, this, this here, this is called modulus. Okay. Do you guys know what modulus does? Yeah, it gives you the remainder. Okay. So cause what, am I, what am I doing here? Like, what's this line of code do right here? I've... I've initialized a variable called uh, uint32 underscore t, and I found that this is the fastest, one of the fastest variables. If you do an int variable, that's very slow. Also, doubles are pretty slow too. Okay, all those are, all those are kind of slow. Okay, so this is going to be an integer value, but it's actually a quick variable. So if you're looking at optimizing your system, the type of variable that you use is going to be really important. Some variables are faster than others. Uint is actually pretty quick. Okay? So, so the difference is, so the like, difference between speed is when, like, when you specify which kind of variable you're going to create. Like, so this type of variable is easier, like quicker to yeah. create. Right? Yeah. That's how fast, what fast actually. Right. So what it is, is it's all integers, okay, so there's no decimal places, so whatever operation you do, you're going to need to keep that in mind that you, you're, not, you're not getting any variable, you're not getting anything after the decimal place, it's just going to cut it off. So when you're working in this, keep everything above zero, right, which is not really that big of a deal, you just need to keep track of it, okay. So I've got this uh, pretty fast variable, uint underscore t. That equals second, and then I've got this here: micros divided by a thousand. So what does that line, what does that line do? Or it's divided by a million, actually. What's the function micros do again? So the function micros returns the number of microseconds that have passed okay. since you started your program. Okay, since basically since you powered on your Arduino card, it there's actually a timer on the Arduino card. So if you want timestamp data. It's got it. So what did you have? So I've got micros uh, divided by a million. Yeah, so it gives you seconds. It normalizes your time. Yeah, this gives me seconds right here. Okay, and then right here, right, I've got seconds modulus sixty. What does this do? Give me like in terms of minutes. Yeah. So it'll it'll tell me. Basically, it just gives me the, uh, the seconds, right? But what is it? What is it actually doing, right? So when it gets, let's say, when it gets to sixty, what is my what is uh, sec sixty? What value does it have? Zero. Zero. Okay. So if you look at my output here, right? Let me move this over. So if you look at my output, right, it gets to sixty, and then it goes back to zero, and then uh, the, the minutes go up one increment, right? So all this is doing is just saying, okay, it's just like a, your watch, basically, right? I'm just, I'm just outputting 60 seconds right there, right? So I also wanted to get minutes, and I could have put this uh, in the format of a digital clock, right? But there's some kind of some issues because so usually a digital clock always has two places here. So I would have to go in and add an if statement to put an extra zero there in front of it if, say, it was like five, right? Because a digital clock, it doesn't just say five, it says zero five. So I, in my program here, when I actually do the serial print line, I'd have to add that extra zero. And I didn't really feel like doing that, so I just said seconds equals 55, but it's sort of the same thing, okay? Now right here, I wanted to get the minutes, okay? So I took this value seconds, and I divided it by 60, right? So what does this give me?
So, I mean, just all right, right? Right? Because what does seconds keeping track of? Just the number of seconds, and it just keeps getting bigger, right? So, this keeps track of the number of seconds since I started the program. It's probably going to be a big number, right? So, this just divides it by second, and then it tells you the number of minutes, okay? Right? Now, why did I do the, why did I do another modulo, modulus right there? Because it's, so the basically it's equivalence class, right? It's what? It's equivalence class in math, like, uh, it, it, it's, well, if it's mod 10, then 1, 11, 21, 31 are the same thing. Yeah. Right? They're equivalent. That's what we say in math, like, equivalence class. Right, so I did, I did mod 60, okay, so what does that tell me? That tells you 0 and 60, 120, 180 is the same thing. Right, so, but in my in terms of my output, right, so what's going to happen when I get to 60 or 59 minutes and it switches over to 60? It's going to be how many seconds have passed, essentially. So you're going to think of divided by modulus 60 and how many seconds have passed since the last time they went to 0, right? Well, it'll go to 0 and then how it goes up. Right, yeah, just like your clock, right? So after 60 minutes, this goes back to 0, and then I got I get another hour. So then here, right, I take uh, seconds, I divide that by 360, that gives me the hours, right? And then I do uh, hour 60 equals hour modulus 60, although, so that would mean that it would go to yeah, 60 mod, hours. That should be, be mod, <laughs> mod 24. this should be either modulus 24 or 12, depending right. on what kind of clock you want. Okay. So I have this thing, I always program a so just copy and paste. for no reason. I think you just want so, to copy and paste, maybe. What? I think you just want to save time to copy well, and paste. So last night I was reviewing a journal article until like 1.30 in the morning. So when I did this, I was, like I did it this morning, <laughs> I was not very conscious because my son woke up at 6.30. Coding on very little sleep, that's what happened. So. Okay, so now I want four the end of the semester, I want you guys to come up with something to do with the Arduino cards. This will be something you do on your own time, so like a homework project. For me, I'm going to make a potty watch for my son, okay? Because I'm going to make some, I'm going to get a little buzzer or something from an electronic store or something that I can steal, and I'm going to make this thing start buzzing every 20 minutes, and then I'm going to put batteries on it somehow, so it'll be this cool gizmo thing that he wears, so hopefully he'll like it. I'll try and make it waterproof, so. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> it'll be something like that. But I want you guys to come up with something kind of cool, maybe some kind of, like, household gadget or device that yeah. you think would be maybe even, like, kind of marketable, that you could sell to people. Like, you know, some kind of gadget that, or something useful in your research, maybe. I mean, I, I, I was thinking, but it's not, so I, I was thinking because my girlfriend cooks, so when she cooks, sometimes something takes uh -huh. like an hour to boil, so I want to, I kind of want to do a timer too, so she knows like, she knows when it, she has to do the next step on the food. Yeah. But that's the same idea, that's kind of on, like. That's the, fine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. you okay. can do that. Okay. Um, you could even have it, you could even have have it tell her the next step on the computer, right? That's too much. No, no, no. You, that would be really cool. Have it, have it tell her the next step. So she has the computer there, right? And then it, it displays a message, right, on the serial port, right? So you could have, oh, that would be great, right? So you could actually have a step-by-step -step recipe thing wow. that would tell her how to cook. But so, she's gonna cook it, not me. Well, like then I have to know all the recipes. I mean, I can't help you with the social aspects <laughs> of, of doing it. But okay, so I want you guys to actually write this yourself. So either you can copy this down, or but put this in your lab book, and you know, it would be good if you go through and document it too. Okay, because I just have this thing about programming clocks. I don't, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> But it's fun, um, and it's also useful. So you can make a timer with this, right? You could, and, you know, it'd be really easy to have an if statement. So when you get to a certain time, right, 
you can output a voltage, right? So you can output a digital voltage, right? So hopefully you don't do anything evil with that, but you could do that, okay? Every time he has an accident, 120 volts. <laughs> yeah, you could turn on a power supply. You know, you can really do anything with these Arduino cards, and they're really, they're pretty great. Now, but what we are going to be able to do, what I want you guys to do, and I will help you with the code a little bit today, but I think hopefully we're at the point where I'll write the first couple lines of code for you, and then hopefully you guys can finish it for your, your own project, okay? Now, let's take a look at um, what we're going to do for, uh, for your stepper motor, okay? Do you guys have the, uh, let's bring up the, the table here. So I have here a pulse sequence, okay? Um, and this pulse sequence represents the signals that you're going to have to send to uh, your stepper motor, okay? So we've got four MOSFETs. Right? And this is basically the signal that you're going to have to turn these MOSFETs on and off, on and off. Okay? But we need to understand what this is telling us in order to actually drive the stepper motor. Okay. Okay. Um, now, um, let me draw here on the board. So. Actually, I'm going to draw right here. And I am going to leave my, uh, my timer running uh, during class, or maybe longer. I don't know. 